Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my Missing Check Numbers series, part two of two, and maybe a little extended cut for the numbers. And I'm showing you how to find gaps in your check number sequences. So if you're dumb like me and you put a check in your wallet and you forget about it, you go, oh, well, yeah, that's what that one is. Okay. All right. So if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch part one first and then come on back. All right, so far we've identified the minimum and the maximum check numbers, right? We got max 104. Let's go back to our code. And what's next? All right, next, we're going to build a string that's going to have the list of check numbers in it that are missing. All right, so let's dim another variable. Uh, let's call it the missing as a string. And we're going to start off by saying missing equals it's blank. Just make it a blank, you know. You got to initialize it, right? Set it up as, as an empty string. Now, Visual Basic is very good about initializing strings to empty strings, but some other languages aren't. So it's a good idea to get in the habit of initializing your variables. Okay. We're also going to need a counter variable. So dim x as a long, and we're going to have to look up each one of those check numbers in the middle, right? To see if it exists or not. So we'll need an ID variable to hold that as a long as well. Okay, so now right here, we're gonna loop from the minimum check number to the maximum check number, which is what we just figured out. So for x equals min check num to max check num. And then next at the bottom. And the nice thing about for loops is you don't gotta worry about incrementing your counter because the for loop handles that for you. All right, now in here, we're gonna say id equals, I wanna look up the check number that I'm on from the table, or actually from the query to make sure it's in there, right? So ID equals NZ D lookup, the ID field from the check number Q, where long check num equals X, okay? And then zero it if there is not one found. So let's take a look at what we got here. Here's the check number Q, okay? And here's my code. Let's put it over here so you can see it better. Actually, let me do, I want these side by side so you can see them better. Okay. All right. So we're starting at min check number, which is 101. Yeah. Technically, if you want to make this a little more efficient, you could start at check number plus one and go to max check number minus one. If you wanted to, you, I mean, that's certainly a possibility because we already know those check numbers exist, right? I just thought of that. So there's no reason to have to look up the first one and look up the last one. And technically, if you want to get really super efficient, this would work better with a record set, but that's a whole different. I figure this is easier for most people to comprehend. Is this the, the most efficient way? If you got 10 million checks to look through, no, it's going to run slow. If you got a few thousand checks, this is going to run fast. So don't worry about it. Okay. A lot of the time when I build software like this, I like to, I like to get it working first, make, make it work because it's easier to picture the algorithm in your head. And then after that, you can go back and optimize it and tweak it and make it run faster. All right, but this is perfectly fine for the average database, for the average user. That you're going to have a couple hundred or whatever checks to look through. Don't worry about having to make it super efficient. So we're going to look up ID. So we're looking up this ID field, right, in the check number Q, where the long check number, this value, equals whatever X we're on. So it's going to start at 102, right? because it's min check number plus one. So is 102 there? Yep. Bring back the three. Yep. Set it in the ID. Great. All right. Loop is 103 there. Yep. It brings back a four and so on. And then I just noticed we don't have any gaps in the sequence. We're going to make one. Okay. Now, if ID equals zero, that means there was a null value there. That record doesn't exist. Then missing equals missing. And I'm going to put X and a semicolon and a space. Yeah, you could put a comma there and figure it all out that way, but I figure it looks weird having a comma at the end, whereas a semicolon looks kind of programmery, right? And you kind of expect that. So that's fine. This will work. Otherwise, you got to go through and figure out, is, is there something in the string already before we put a comma on the end of it? This is fine. For the purposes of today, this is fine. Okay? All right, so there we go. Now, when we're done with the loop, we're going to display our results. If missing equals a blank string still, we didn't find any, then message box, no checks missing. Otherwise, message box, 
missing checks are colon and missing. And that's it. That should do it. Save it. Debug compile. Come back out meow. Let's close it. Let's hit the button. Boom. No missing checks. Wonderful. Let's delete 103. Just get rid of the number 103 out of it. Find missing. Oh, 103 is missing. See how it doesn't look too bad with a semicolon on the end there? All right. What if I put in here 111? Find missing. Ah, it found all those checks in the middle are missing because we got the minimum, the maximum, right? 103, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. Those are all missing. Okay. See how that works? That's pretty cool, right? Now, what if you've got a situation where you've been using this for a couple of years, right? And you've got checks from a bunch of different years. Let's say these ones go all the way back to, you know, 2018, for example. Okay. All right. And I just noticed that the format, this was four years ago. This format was before I was using ISO date standard. So I'm going to come in here and put this back to short date, which it should be. I wasn't on my mission yet to make everything ISO dates. Okay, that looks much better. Um, and let's say the user comes in here and filters this, right? Date filter. Let's say uh, between um, 2020-11 and 2024-11. Okay. Now I want to find the missing check numbers on this page. If I hit find missing, it's still going to show all of them. I want to use these two as the, as the beginning and end points, right? How do you do that? Well, we're going to do that in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all my extended cut videos. I'll show you how to look at the filters in this form and get the values from this guy right here. So you're not looking at the entire table of data, right? Now, before I let you go, I also want to let you know I got a check register seminar. I basically started with this simple database and I added tons of stuff to it because I use it for my own stuff right? I added all kinds of features to it. All right, you got five hours of videos explaining all this stuff. The basic check register is pretty much what we built in the free one. I show you how to put a running balance over here next to it, right? We print checks. So you can actually print it out, right? $1,500. Actually, I, we have a currency to English uh, function. I'll show you how to batch print checks. So you can put a bunch of checks in the system and then print them all at once, right? Uh, we'll do different payees and categories so you can track what your expense categories are. We'll do multiple accounts so you can have multiple checking accounts, multiple savings accounts, whatever you want to do. All kinds of other stuff, sorting, filtering, searching, uh, selecting different check types, one up, three up, whatever, all kinds of stuff. Different reporting you can do, all right? Your expenses by category reports. It's just it's lots of cool stuff, all right? So this is the check register seminar. Now, if you don't want the five hours of videos, you can also get this just as a template. So you can just download the database that I build in that seminar as a template. Okay, you don't get all the videos. So if you have any questions about it, I'm going to say, go watch the videos. <laughs> but you get the full featured version of it. And I'm going to add this find missing checks to this template as well. So that the, if, you, if you get this, you've got these features as well. Okay, okay. All right, so again, members, we're going to do this in the extended cut. And for everybody else, that's going to do it for this little mini seminar, seminar series, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> check numbers. Uh, if there's something you could think of that I missed that you want to add to it, let me know. Post a comment down below, and if enough people are interested, I'll make another video about it. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. 
and you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. 
I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.